Good morning, class. This is Mr. Roberts at Shasta High School, and it's time to step through the Chapter 4 test. Uh, almost all of you should have copies of this in your uh, Google Drive. Again, look for the folder. The look inside of Shared With Me. Most of you have starred the folder already, uh, but I believe the folder name is Roberts, and then dash dash, your last name, comma, your first name. So inside of there, I'm placing a copy, your copy, your corrected version of the chapter 4 test and please get that out and uh, look at it compare it with what's going on here and try to figure out hey what did I do what could I do differently uh, and then what do I need to be practicing moving forward so the first question uh, we are given four expressions and we're asked to simplify them it's a great tool to be able to do uh, one of our equation solving techniques involves rewriting chunks of equations and essentially when we simplify an expression like this we're practicing that idea we're practicing simplifying a, a maybe a, a monomial with inside of an equation and seeing if we can't make that easier to deal with so it does say remove all common factors giant ones and negative exponents so let's start with a so when I look at a it's essentially letting me practice two different ideas right a power raised to a power and the product of two powers with the same base so the first thing we'll go ahead and oops uh, that's a little drift first thing we'll look at is this part right here what do I get when I take b to the third and I raise that to the fourth power well remember this means that I have exactly four sets of factors that look like this right I have a b to the third 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 when I raise a power to a power, the shortcut is I end up multiplying these exponents. If I write them all out, I can count them. There are exactly there are exactly 12 factors of b here. So the first thing I'm going to do is replace that with b to the 12th power. And then wait, we've got more. So then um, I've got this, right? And I can collapse these together. If I think about it, the first part has two factors of b, and then I've got four factors of b. So that's a total of six factors of b. So this is b to the sixth power. And then I can do the same thing again that I just did in, in the green green box above, right? Now I've got 12 factors of b, and I'm multiplying by six more factors of b. So that's exactly 18 factors of b. So the answer here is this, this thing can be rewritten as just b to the 18th power. Let's look at part b. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is clear the negative exponent. It's not always the first thing I do, but I'm going to do it here. Uh, be careful, x to the third over x to the negative third is not a giant one. But I'm going to multiply by a giant one to get rid of the negative exponent. And I am going to multiply both the numerator and the denominator by three factors of x, x to the positive third. I do this for, I, the reason why I'm doing this is because I understand that if I multiply x to the negative third times x to the positive third, that will give me x to the zero power, which is the number one. Another way I can think about this is x to the negative third is the reciprocal of, of uh, x to the third. So that's literally one over x cubed. When I multiply those things, it's just the number one. So the only thing I have left in my denominator is the number eight. So at this point, I've got an eight in my denominator. I have 16 in the numerator, and I now have six factors of x, right? One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, four, five, six. Uh, and then the final thing I see here is I have 16 over 8. 16 over 8 is just 2. So I'm left with 2 times x to the 6th power. Powerful, if you think about it, the fact that I could replace this with simply that. Part C. Um, again, I see a numerator and a denominator here. And... Uh, in my numerator, there's some numerical coefficients, so I'm going to go ahead and multiply those. I've got an 8, and I'm going to multiply that by 5 halves. If I multiply 8 by 5 halves, I could do it two ways. 5 times 8 is 40, and then half of 40 is 20. Or I can take 8 divided by 2 and get 4, and 4 times 5 is still 20. So my numerical coefficient in the numerator just becomes the number 20. So that's the first thing I've got in the numerator. Next thing I've got in my numerator is I do have an a, I've got an a squared, and I'm multiplying that by an a to the third. a squared times a to the third is a to the fifth power. So I have an a to the fifth power. 
and I also have a b to the fourth power. Last thing I'm going to do is clean up this negative exponent. So again, you see me do this all the time. I'm going to multiply this by the number 1 in the form of a squared over a squared. In doing so, I completely eliminate this negative exponent. This and this, right, have a product of 1. It equals a to the 0, which is just the number 1. So my denominator now is just the number 1, so I don't write the denominator anymore. In my numerator, I have the number 20. I have 7 factors of a. 7 factors of a. There's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, right? 7 factors of a, and I've got b to the 4th power. As a courtesy, let me go ahead and highlight this. This a, a to the 5th times a to the 2nd is... <laughs> <laughs> as a courtesy, Mr. Roberts, as a courtesy to yourself, because you just wrote the wrong thing there. That's powerful. I like that. Uh, let me put these back. This is b to the fourth. This is supposed to be a to the seventh. I said it, didn't write it, but I was highlighting it in green, which was nice, because it pulled my eyes into the fact that, wait a minute, wait a minute, I wrote the wrong thing here. So, yeah, my final answer is 20 times a to the seventh times b to the fourth. Final question, final part rather to question one is this. It's all factors of two, right? My bases are all two. I'm just going to, I'm not going to worry about the fact that it's the number two. I'm just going to treat it like a variable and then at the end maybe I can make, turn it into a value if I want. In my numerator, I have two to the negative first power times two to the second power. Well, if I take my two exponents, because it's the product of two numbers, same base, different exponents, I can add the negative 1 and the 2, and that numerator is going to become 2 to the negative 1 plus 2, or just simply 2 to the first power. In my denominator, I have 2 to the negative second power. I can clear that by multiplying both the numerator and denominator by 2 squared. So in my denominator now, the 2 to the negative second times 2 to the second is just 2 to the 0 power, which is 1. And in my numerator, I have three factors of 2. So we can either write 2 cubed, or we can write it as the number 8. A much more efficient way of writing the number 8 than I was presented with.